Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you how you can use the Tiled Map Editor to create game objects and then import those into Unity as a prefab object. Now, this is reliant on the Super Tiled to Unity importer for Tiled. So in order to import into Unity, as I showed in a different video, which I'll link in the description, uh, we need the Super Tiled to Unity importer uh, to convert the Tiled Maps and Tile Sets into workable Unity objects. So the starting point for this tutorial is assuming that you have these files located in your project under the Super Tiled to Unity so that we can actually use the importer. OK, so here we have a demo map I've been working on. You can see that it has tile layers in the furniture, walls and ground. That just gives us the background and the basic collisions. But when we want to set up an object that has certain properties that we can import into a prefab, those need to go on a object layer. So if you haven't already created an object layer, just click here and choose object layer and then select the layer that you want to create the object onto, which will eventually become a prefab. When you're working on the object layers, these object tools will be selected. So if you want your new object to be eventually converted into a prefab that has a collider in Unity, then you probably want to use insert rectangle or insert circle or insert ellipse rather over here. Or if you prefer for it not to have a collider, you can just use insert point. So for the sake of demonstration, I'll use insert rectangle so we can talk about how to set up the collider shapes as well. And you can see that when I move my cursor around, it's snapping to the grid. So if you want that to also be the case for you, then go up to view snapping and choose snap to grid. So I'm working on a 16 by 16 pixel grid here. So I'm going to left click and hold to drag a rectangle shape where I want to create it. You can see it can be any number of grid size squares. You can see it can be as big as you want in terms of grid space. Uh, once again, I'm snapping to the grid, so that's why it's all 16 by 16 pixel increments. So here we have our new object as soon as I let go. And you can see the rectangle shape, which will eventually be either the collision shape or the trigger zone. Now, when you set up a prefab in Unity, you're usually going to apply a mono behavior script to it to give that prefab some functionality. So you can see in my project over here on the left, I have some object templates, including teleporter.tx. You can see the default name set to teleporter, the class name set to teleport. Now this is specifically a tiled class name. It doesn't need to be the same as your class names inside of Unity. So if I jump over to Unity, you can see this is teleporter. The script name is teleporter as well. You link the tiled object with a prefab that you want to replace it with manually. So you don't need to worry about the exact naming. So what the class actually does here is it sets a number of custom properties that this object should always have whenever you create a copy of this object template. So let's hit S to switch to select objects. Click on our new object. Uh, let's give it a name. Uh, I will call it invisible wall. And then let's also give it the class name in invisible wall. So there's no custom properties in here yet. You can add a custom property to each instance, or you can add it to the template and whatever's on the template will copy to every instance of it. Just as when you have a prefab in Unity, it would copy the same data to every instance of that prefab. Okay, so we have our object. Let's save it as a template in our project. So I'm going to right click and do save as template. So right clicking straight on the object. And then we can just save our invisible wall.tx template over here in the object templates. So now you can just keep dragging copies of this wherever you want it to be. So if you want to have a bunch of invisible walls, it would be very easy to do that. OK, so now I'm going to jump back over to Unity and we'll see that the invisible wall has actually been created here. So all of this importing is done automatically uh, by super tiled to Unity. The only thing I have in my scene here is the tile map. So my other video shows you how to add your tile maps and tile sets into your Unity project so that it can work like this. But once you have it properly set up, you can just drag a copy of your map into the scene, and then that will include all of the loaded objects and wall collisions and all of that stuff, which is basically what that plugin does. OK, so we have a object of sorts in our project, but it's not a Unity prefab. You can see that this has certain properties, such as the name from tiled, the class name, the location on our map. And it does have the box collider. 
So you can see this, this is not in is trigger mode. If I hit play, we can actually collide with that wall just as if it was a tile. And if we had custom tiled properties set up, they would show down here and be accessible from other Unity scripts. So let's go back to the invisible wall template and tiled, and let's actually add a custom property. But rather than adding it here with plus and changing it here, let's go to the view menu, custom types editor, and let's add in the properties that an invisible wall class should have. So I'm gonna hit add class, and I need this to be a matching name. So invisible wall, and let's give it a property that Unity can recognize. And these specific properties you can find on the help page for SuperTiled to Unity. So I won't go over all of them, but let's add in a Boolean. And because this is a Unity property, I'm gonna type Unity and is trigger. So I'm going to hit okay now and let's hit the X. So an invisible wall should not be a trigger. So we'll just save this for right now and watch as it imports this property into Unity. And if it's not automatically refreshing, it could be because uh, the importer doesn't recognize that there's been any changes. So a quick way to do that, just move an object one square over, hit save. Okay, so let's go back into Unity. And if we click on our invisible wall, we can see that it's still not showing anything for the super custom properties. Since the default is it's not a trigger, uh, I guess there's no need for that to actually show up here. But if I go to the property and I check it as is a trigger, and save it entitled, go back to Unity, you'll see that property now shows up. Unity is trigger, Boolean true. And the importer already knows to set the is trigger on the box collider. So when a box collider's in trigger mode, you can walk right through it. And usually that would be for triggering an event. So I hit play and you can see I can walk straight through the collider. An example of a trigger event would be like a teleporter. So I walk in here and it moves my character across the screen over here to the designated location. Okay, so, so far so good in importing our objects. Now we want to turn it into a prefab from our project, have the custom scripts on it, and then take the property data from the importer and put those in the prefab where it should be. Okay, so to start, I'm going to copy these box collider settings. So clicking on the three dots, copy component, and we'll come back to that in a second. Let's go ahead and create a new game object in our scene. So I'm gonna right click, create empty, and then let's call it invisible wall. Gonna add a component, box collider 2D. So I'm just setting up a game object like we would without having tiled at all. Paste the component values in, and uh, let's double click on that. Okay, so it's got the same location. Let's move it a bit. And we can see that the location of these two objects are separate. And this object is also set to is trigger. Let's turn this off for right now, because that would be a custom setting that we're bringing over from tile that we want to replace on this prefab. So now let's save this as a prefab in our project. I guess I'll use my object folder, invisible wall. I will drag this in here as a prefab. Uh, let's reset the position to zero on the prefab. Okay. And now we have this prefab. We want to replace this automatically created object with the prefab. So how do we do that? We go up to edit project settings. And then when you have super tiled to unity installed, you should see this super tiled to unity project settings menu option. And you're going to want to expand prefab settings, prefab replacements. So for any object from tiled, you can replace that with a prefab in unity, but you can see that there will be nothing here initially. And you want to add the object types from an XML. So that XML, is the custom property settings object types xml down here you see i have one loaded up but where do you get that from so back in tiled go back to the view menu custom types editor and hit export in the top right and then that will export the class name with the property association uh, for any of the classes you've created down here as far as i've seen it doesn't work with enums that you set up in uh, this window but it does work with the classes so hit export and then choose the location inside of your Unity project. So I have property types here. I'm just going to override that. Double click. Yes. Then back in the project settings, you're going to want to hit refresh here. Just make sure it's loaded up here and add object types from XML, which will grab it from the definitions down here. So we can see 
invisible wall popped up, but we don't have a game object to replace it with. So I'm going to do that now. So let's select here, type in the name of the prefab invisible wall, and then you can go ahead and save that. You might need to re-import the tiled assets to get it to show up. But a quicker way might just be to go back to tiled, move your object one square over, control S to save, switch over to Unity, and then we'll automatically re-import this map specifically. So you can see we have the invisible wall here with the box collider. But you can, And you can see that we have no custom scripts here on this game object as of yet. But it is creating a instance of the prefab exactly how we have it defined inside of our Unity project. So first I want to point out that when you're doing the prefab replace, these Unity prefix properties uh, don't seem to automatically update on your game objects. But there's a workaround for that. If you're going to be doing the custom prefab replace, all you need to do is to put the name of the property you want to change inside of your script, and then you can update any other components based on that property. So when we're importing the tiled object, in order to get this to set, we just need there to be a property with the same name. So rather than having unity is trigger, let's uh, add another property to the class. And I will call this Boolean is trigger, just like in the script name. And let's save that. So I'm going to check is trigger is true here. And now if we jump over to unity, you can see invisible wall is trigger is being set automatically. So it takes the Boolean property here and it sets it on our prefab. So in our invisible wall script, if we wanted to take this value and then update it on the box collider, uh, then we can just create a setter function. So let's do public bool is trigger, and I'll have this be a set. And actually, since we're gonna take this and set it on the box collider, we don't really need there to be the variable inside of here. So we'll just have the setter actually. So in the setter for is trigger, let's do get component, collider 2d so any type of collider and then is trigger is equal to the value we just passed in okay so our variable disappeared here because all we have is the setter function but as long as our setter has the same name you can also create a method that would be like this set is trigger as long as the name and the data type match what you have set up in tiled it should go off so it'd be like do stuff here and that would be the other alternative so you can either have a variable or a setter or a method so let's see if it's triggering now i'll move the object to get it to call so right now it's still not triggering and that's because the setter has a capital i here so the property in tiled is trigger the i is lowercase so if we want that to call the property without um changing our naming scheme then we can do that in tiled so i'm going to rename the property to be is trigger capital okay so now we know we're trying to set a property and we can remove this extra copy of is trigger so we only want the properties that are defined in the class okay so now let's check is trigger true our setter should get called and if we check in unity you can see is trigger got set to true so that was done calling this i'm not 100 percent sure if the unity is triggers don't work with prefabs uh, but if you run into that problem that would basically be how you can solve it now, for other settings that are going to be on your mono behavior, it can be much simpler. So let's say that our invisible wall had a HP value. So let's do public um, int HP or HP lowercase caps matter. And let's and then let's default this to one. So back in Unity, our scripts compile. Uh, if you run into this where the prefab doesn't get replaced, just try re-importing from tile, just move an object and it should reset. And then you can see our HP variable is set right here. So in order to set this, we just need a property for the template that has the same name. So let's go up to view custom types editor, and then let's see invisible wall, add a member. So this is an int and HP lowercase, or we can make it capital. Maybe it makes more sense for it to be capital since it's an abbreviation. Okay, and I can uh, default it to 10 here inside of tiled as the default. Okay, so we can see our HP property is set there. Let's make sure HP is capital in our C sharp script. And let's see how that imports over. Okay, so once again, if it's not replacing the prefab, just move it a little bit, get it to automatically re import. And we can see invisible wall is not setting the HP. So I believe the reason for that is that we need to export our list of properties back over to Unity. 
So in custom types editor, hit export. Uh, we export the property types right here. Save it. Close out. Now let's try moving our wall so that it re-imports. Go back over to Unity. And we can see our HP is being set up here. So you might actually be curious that property types, what does it actually look like? It's just a list of the object types and the properties that are under them, including the variable type and the default values. So we have our default values being imported over from tiled. But let's set a custom value for this specific wall. So I'm going to click on the wall and let's set the HP to 100. OK, and now we go back over to Unity and you can see the HP is set to 100 here. So you can have the template values and then you can have specific values for each instance that you add to your tiled map. OK, now it's impossible to really see where these invisible walls are. Oh, and uh, we can remove the initial one that I was creating for the prefab. We only want the ones that are actually being imported over from tiled. OK, so this is the real one. There's no indicator where these invisible walls are. So I'm going to jump into the prefab for the invisible wall. Let's click on the icon in the top right and give it a little icon for marking where we have an invisible wall, I guess. Um, a blue diamond seems OK. Let's go back out. So this one doesn't have one set. Uh, let's see if we re-import it, if that will add it. OK, yep. And there we have our icon. So if we create a whole bunch of these um, and we can do that using the V insert template tool, select the template we want to insert and then just click around. Oh, make sure you don't add too many to one square. And then we have six invisible walls. OK, so we click over here back in Unity. Our objects have been created, uh, but we can see these are all in is trigger mode. So if I hit play, I can still walk through all of them. So let's go ahead and correct that. S or click here to go to object select mode. We can see that they're all set is trigger is true by default, but that doesn't make sense for a wall. So let's click on the wall template, turn that off is trigger is set off. Now we can click on all of them and see that they have is trigger turned off. Go back over to Unity and we can see that our property is being set up here. Is trigger is set to false. So now if I hit play, I can't walk through any of these invisible walls. And if I change my spawn point, let's just move that over here. I'll hit play and I can't walk through the walls. So our invisible walls are successfully being added to the scene. And these are all being imported straight from within tiled. And you can see that once you have this set up, you can get a nice workflow going to seamlessly go between your tiled maps and your Unity editor. So I hope all of that made as much sense as it possibly could. Uh, if you have more questions, you can also check out the documentation on Super Tiled Unity. It's a bit thin, but there may be some useful stuff in there. Uh, there is a uh, GitHub repo with an example on how to import the prefabs. So you could check that out as well. So I've been Chris. Thanks for watching, and I will see all of you in my future Unity content.